So we're continuing on with the database normalization and we just took this transaction cars and we moved it into, uh, we had a second normal form violation of that table. We saw that car ID, uh, because of the rule of second normal form, no partial dependencies on part of the primary key. So therefore we created a new entity for car. Let's go back and do a double check now. So if we take a look at booking transactions, uh, we can also see that there is another repeating element here. Let's, let's take a look at the main data as well, and we'll see that. Well, let's take a look at date in and date out. And notice that well, we got the dates, and it looks like they belong to the cars and it looks like it belongs to the, the car transactions. Now I could, uh, I would have to split these out into a new table, but what are the primary keys? And it looks like I failed to follow one of the steps of the normalization. So if we take a look, what's this concatenated primary key? Well, it's a transaction ID and a car ID. We can definitely say that the date in and date out based on the information here, it looks like it follows the transaction ID and a particular car ID. So every itemized line, which is actually what this entity here represents, it represents our line itemization on each of the orders. We need these elements to be moved over as well. And I'll go ahead and do that. So there we go. I, I made the correction to the table and let's see where we're at right now. So we have our booking transactions and we have uh, these particular pieces of data and that's going to then move us into a discussion of third normal form. So third normal form is when no non-key attribute is dependent on another non-key attribute. So no non-key attribute depends on another non-key attribute. So what does this mean? Th is, is client contact, client name, and client number dependent on the transaction ID? Well, if that were to be correct, then every transaction that we create, we would have to write out the client number, the client name, and the client contact again. So this is this client uh, entity, which I'll have to create, will violate third normal form. So when I violate a normal form, we have to create a new entity, which we'll do. So we'll create this new entity, and we will give it a name. And the name that we'll give this is client. And client has the client num, and I'll do that in blue. So grab blue, so client, num. And that's a primary key itself. So we go ahead and we, we need to then to bring, so client number is taken. We created a new entity based on that. So that means we need to bring the other two members, the client name, and the client contact and we'll move those over to this table and we'll link those into that table there there we go and is this in second normal form well here's here's a hint is when we when it violates the first normal form we create a concatenated primary key and in order for a second normal form to be violated, we need to have a concatenated primary key. Since this table, this entity, does not have a concatenated primary key, it is in second normal form already. Going back over to our transaction ID, we now have two more attributes that are not dependent on this primary key. Actually what we have is the discount is dependent on the member level. So this fails third normal form and we have to create a new entity for that. So we'll go ahead and develop a new entity for it. Let's get some space for that. 
and let's draw a box here for that, make it smaller, and that will be, what are we going to call that? We are going to call this discount. Okay, and discount has as its primary key, we're going to call it member level. Member level. And that is a primary key. And so, because that's the primary key, we can then take discount, and I'll move discount to it. Okay, and the member level is now the primary key, and we'll just link it up here like so. And since this does not have discount entity, does not have a concatenated primary key, it is in second normal form already. Taking a look at our database design as we have it now, because we split out the client, if the client were still linked into the transaction ID, and I want to point this out because you might see this in, in some other systems, is in order for us to create a client, we'd have to create a transaction in the system. So if we wanted to look up a client, like we might have a certain system, and you may see somebody do something like this. They'll have the 9,000 to 9,999 transaction numbers. They're going to represent dummy orders, we call them dummy orders, where we store customer information. So if you were to walk into a store and you were to overhear them saying, oh, we'll have to create a, a, a dummy order to put you into the system, then that tells you that uh, their database that they use for their store is not in a third normal form.